Miss Woodward, you out there, you out there somewhere? I'm here. Oh, dang, she did. She is here. Okay. Just to make your day that much better, Hubert. Exactly. All right. So we got we got a uh, response variable is a variable whose value can be explained by the value of the explanatory or predictor variable. Okay, so the response variable is the dependent variable. Write that down. The response variable is usually your dependent variable. And your explanatory or predictor variable is usually your independent variable. We're going to be working with a lot of scatter diagrams. I want you to be able to find the information that I want you to find on a calculator or the spreadsheet. I want you to be able to find the slope. Let me pull up my handy dandy. Hold on a second. I had it pulled up. In this section, well, I'm waiting. There it is. And I know I covered this in the videos. And if you didn't watch the videos, that's not my fault. Kind of like the other things I talked about during the in the email. Some of y'all need to realize this is not an online class. You do not do things the way you want to do it. Okay. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to be good. All right. We're talking about correlation. Correlation. Correlation and slope are related. Correlation goes from negative one to positive one. You can have a negative correlation, or you can have a positive correlation. Same thing with slope. You can have a positive slope, or you can have a negative slope. And these two guys are related. If you have a negative correlation, then you have a negative slope. If you have a positive correlation, you have a positive slope. You've got to remember that the slope equation, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And the point slope equation, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. Now all that, you should know. Now, correlation is kind of showing a pattern. Okay. Causality I drink too much wine. I have to pee. Okay. Now, causality. Can somebody give me two words for causality? Causing you make effect. It, what? Cause and effect. Oh, my God. Did you actually watch the videos? Oh, wow. What a concept. You watch the videos and you know the material. Wow. Don't y'all think that's a wild don't just that's a, that's a wild idea? I think it's a wild idea. Cause and effect. Miss Woodward, you read you watched the videos too. I wow. Sure did. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Make no okay, shut up. It's a country song. Joe Diffie. Okay? Cause and effect. Some of you may not drink wine. What if you drink too much water or too much beer? 
You have to pee. That's cause and effect. One causes the other. Now, I'm going to write a sentence down here. Correlation does not equal causality. But causality equals what? Correlation. Equals correlation. And if you watch the videos, I gave this example with the uh, Nicolas Cage movies. Okay? You work at at the Amstar 14 and you see Nicolas Cage movies and ticket sales look like that. And you also did a research project for that same week, July 4th week. And you do July 4th week here on suicides. And you see that the July 4th week suicide rate is up. So, does that mean that Nicolas Cage movies cause a suicide? No. Correlation does not necessarily mean causality. But causality always renders correlation. Now, these are all test questions. These are test questions, you know, may, uh, find, the, find the equation of a line. Find the equation of a line. That's the test question. Find the correlation coefficient. Now, you're going to do that with your calculator. I'm not going to ask you to do that by hand. There will be examples about causality. There is a high percentage of drowning deaths with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever deaths. Why? What, 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 what external force may cause deaths of, of swimming deaths, I'm sorry, drownings, and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever? Well, you're both outside a lot during what time of the year? Summer. Summer. So summer would be a outside variable that would cause correlation and causality. That's an example. So those are just some things that you're going to see these words you're going to see in 4.1 and 4.2. You're going to see those those things, and you're going to see, you know, causality. You're going to see a lot of scatter plots. Now we're going to do a scatter plot right now, and I'm going to do it on the Excel spreadsheet. Then I'll do it on the calculator. Now we're going to do several of these today because these are test questions. You're going to see beside those terminology definition questions I just showed you. So let's go to the handy dandy. Excel spreadsheet. And I'm going to just make up some problems. There we go. Well, I'm waiting. I don't know why it's taking so long to pull up a blank spreadsheet. There we go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to make the grid a little bit darker. Why is it going so slow? There. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider and make this a little bit thicker. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to put some numbers in here. 
uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and sixteen, eighteen. We're going to do twenty. That'll be our X axis. And then I'm just going to put in four, two, five, eight, nine, six, three, two, seven. And I didn't hit the right button. I suck. Hold on. Four, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, five, and eight. I'm going to make those a little bit bigger and I can't stand to be centered. There we go. I'm going to make those a little bit bigger. Now, I'm going to go slow here because I want you to know how to use the Excel spreadsheet. You highlight these guys and you go to insert. And the spreadsheet is going awfully slow because evidently they want you to be able to, you know, follow along because I don't know why it's going so slow. Here, right here, I want you to look at that. Right above charts, there's a scatter plot. It says insert scatter or bubble chart. Click on that. Now you can pick what you want, but I'm going to pick that one. There's your scatter plot right there. And there is your scatter plot. Now, I can tell you there's a correlation there, and it's a positive correlation, because I see a correlation. You're looking for a trend, and I see a trend, like, right through there. So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to click on, right-click on the one of the dots, add trend line. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit display equation on chart and display R squared, which is your correlation coefficient. And there is your, let's see if I make it a little bit bigger for y'all. It doesn't like to, there. There is your equation of your trend line, which is right here. And there is your R squared, which you want R. So somebody take your calculator. I'll, I'll do it. 0.3614. So I'm going to take 0.3614. Hold on a minute. I restarted this computer, but I don't know. Something must be. It's taking too long. Somebody take the square root of 0.3614 for me. What do you get? I got 0 0.6012. 0 0.6012. So the. Point six, say it one more time, point what? Point six zero one two. R is equal to point six zero one two. That is your correlation coefficient. Make sure you know how to get that. That is important. So you have a strong correlation. You have a positive correlation because it's positive 0.6012. It's above 0.5, so it's a strong correlation. And your equation of your trend line is 0.2939x plus 3.8667. Now, there is a way you can do that by hand, and I am not going to show you because takes half to three quarters of a page just to do the math. And there's no sense in doing it since we have technology now. So now I'm going to pull up. I'm scared to pull this calculator up. I think I'm just going to exit out of the calculator and pull it back up. It's 
shouldn't. When you hit the X button, it should disappear. Not 15 minutes later. Now let me try to pull it up. Now I'm going to show you how to do it on your uh, calculator. I'm going to attempt to show you how to do it on a calculator. So go ahead and type in those same numbers in your calculator using stat and edit. I'm waiting. Okay, hit stat right there and edit, enter. And there is your spreadsheet. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oops. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Oh, my Lord. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 16, 18, 20. And I can't remember what I punched in, so I'll go to the spreadsheet, make it smaller. Four, two, six, seven. Hold on a second. Four, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, five. I have to go back in and type them. I don't know what's going on with my computer, y'all. Y'all forgive me. That's an eight. I'm, I don't know why it's conspiracy. There's my numbers. Make sure 10 and 12. I don't think those did right. 10 and 12. It's having some kind of problem with digits. I don't know. 10 and 12. There. Is that it? Now. Hit stat, calculate, and go to linear regression. Linear regression means you want the equation of the line. It's going to automatically default to L1 and L2. All you have to do now is hit calculate. There you go. So you pull out your handy dandy piece of paper. And you go over here and you say, Y is equal to 0.2939. And X plus 3.867. And my correlation coefficient is equal to 0 0.6011. You could argue one, two, but. And that should be what we got with the Excel spreadsheet. 2939 2939-38667. 2939-3.8667. Now, you're talking about two or three questions on the test, so make sure you can do, we're going to do another one, make sure you can do these on your calculator or your spreadsheet. Capish? So let's do an earn. Let's go with 21, 22, 23, 23, 23. 
Four, five, six, seven, five, four, three, one. All right, I want you to take your calculator or your spreadsheet, and I want you to find the equation of the line and find the correlation coefficient. So do that with your calculator or your spreadsheet, and I'll do it on both. In fact, I'll go ahead and type it in on the calculator. Stat, edit. What's it doing? And that's going to be 21. 21. 22. 22. Evidently, my calc, my, my, uh, 23. Twenty-five and twenty-six. I don't know what's up with my computer. Delete, delete. Have a good day. Got to go to work. All right. Hey Hubert, this is Haley's roommate. Well, what's your name? Thomas Dustin. You got to tell me your name if you were my, if you were my, oh well. His name is Destin Fox. Last name? Fox. Oh, okay. All right. Four, five, six, seven, five. Oh my lord, six, seven, five, Lord have mercy, four, three, one. I don't know what is wrong with this thing. It's like it's dang old Langoliers just back in time or something. There. Now. I'm going to draw this. I'm going to hit insert. I'm going to go to my. There is my scatter plot. And I'm going to hit right click, add trend line. Looks like a negative slope. Display, display, and there is my trend line and my r squared of course you got to take the square root of 0.4585 so somebody do that while i'm making it bigger so what do you get what is the square root of 0.4585 i got Point six seven seven one. So your correlation coefficient is point six eight. So the strong it should be negative. Why isn't that negative? It should be negative. There's the negative slope, so it's negative. I don't know why it's not putting a negative right there. It'd be negative point point six six what seven one. It was point six seven seven one. Negative. Okay. Oh, well, the R squared will always be positive because you're squaring it. Yeah, that's why that's positive, but that's the correlation coefficient. Now, let's go to the handy dandy calculator. And let's go to stat, calculate, and go down to linear regression. 
It'll automatically default to L1 and L2. All you have to do now is hit calculate. There it is. So 0.7616x, 0.7616x plus 21.987 with an R factor or a correlation coefficient of negative 0.6772. Hey Hubert, for some reason, mine's not showing R squared or R. Uh, okay, then what you need to do is you need to go to the, it's clear, Go to catalog. I'm sorry. Go to second catalog and go to the D's. I think it's D's. Let me find it. I think it's called diagnostic. I'm trying to get there. This calculator is running really slow today. Looks like I'm ever going to get to the D's. It should be diagnostic. There it is. Go to diagnostic on, hit enter, and hit enter. Okay, now go back and try it. Go back and hit stat. Calculate. Linear regression. And calculate. Well, mine was already doing it, so it should have do it. Yeah, okay, it worked. Good. Yes, sir, mine worked. Okay, good. And it should stay on there unless you turn it off. It should stay on there. And that's how you do a lot of 4.1 and 4.2. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on 4.1 and 4.2 because, like I said, it's a lot of it using the calculator. And all I want you to do is to be able to find the R factor, find the slope, find the equation of the line, and you can do all that through the spreadsheet or the calculator. Okay, so let's look back at the PowerPoint and just see what I've covered. There, they're giving you some, they're giving you some data there. You turn it into a scatter plot, and then you right click on one of those if you got Excel. Okay, write these down because these will be test questions. Just draw a picture or, or take a picture or whatever. These are test questions. All right, most of the time you're either going to get this, this, or this. Now, every once in a while you'll get a nonlinear, which means a curve. But most of the time in this class you're going to get linear, linear negative, or no correlation. No correlation is a horizontal line. The slope is equal to zero. So make sure you make a note of those three. You don't have to draw all the dots. Just draw lines. Just draw a line left up. Draw a line left down. Draw a upside down parabola. Draw a cubicle. And then draw no correlation. You don't have to draw all those dots. Talking about correlations, which we're talking about that. See, there's there is some of the math that we're not going to do. Okay, uh, this is very tedious. In fact, I, now go ahead and write this down. I told you this: the R coefficient, the, the correlation coefficient, is going to be between negative one and positive one. Positive one, strong positive relationship. Negative one means a strong negative relationship. And that's, you know, self-explanatory. 
Again, here's some more that you might want to write down. Perfect. Strong positive. Somewhat positive. Perfect negative. Strong negative. Somewhat negative. No linear because it's all over the place. Maybe no correlation. And this is nonlinear. So make sure you, you know, and these probably are in the book. And you can look in the book, but just make sure you know the difference between them. This is a strong correlation, strong positive correlation. Here's another. This is probably where they're going to show you by hand. I'm not doing by hand. There you go. Knock yourself out if you want to do by hand, because I'm not going to do that. Okay. Okay. That must be somebody's phone. Yeah, it's our house phone. Uh, Politicians been calling on it. Oh yeah. Vote. <laughs> Y'all get out and vote. Please get out and vote, because I really think. I really think we have lost our damn minds. We need we need to get out and vote. Okay, so I'm looking for anything that sticks out. Lurking variable, write that down. Dang old pervert. Dang old lurking variable. What do you think of when you hear lurking? You think of pervert, somebody following you, right? Okay, a lurking variable let me give you an example. Do you remember a while ago I asked you, is there a correlation between uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever deaths and drowning deaths? There's a lurking variable. The lurking variable is it's hot weather season. It's in the middle of the summer. The summer is the lurking variable. A lurking variable causes causality with the correlation. With the Nicholas Cage versus suicide rate, there was no lurking variable. There's no correlation. But with the Rocky Mountain spotted fever deaths and the drowning deaths, the correlation, the lurking variable is summer. For example, ice cream sales and crime rates have a very high correlation. Does this mean that local government should stop Serving ice cream. No, they don't have anything. The lurking variable is temperature. As air temperature rise, both ice cream sales and crime rates rise. There's the lurking variable. Make sure you know that. There's a negative correlation. Four point two. I'm not going to do least squares regression. That's fitting the curve. You know the trend line, the dash trend line. That's what least squares regression is. You already know how to do that. Now, here is an example, and I want you to write this one down. Here is an example of a question you might get with the slope and the point slope equation. So write this this one down. I'm not going to go over it because y'all all should know how to do this. Okay. Now they pick two and they pick this guy. They pick the second point and the fourth point or the fifth point. Uh, you could pick any of them. You still get about the same answer. It was a straight line, but they pick the second point and the fifth point. And they found the slope, and then they plugged it into the point slope equation. This is an example of a question I would ask you on slope and point slope equation. So there's two or three kinds of problems that I will ask you on this test as far as chapter four. One thing I will ask you is definitions. I'm going to ask you the definition of a correlation, 
that's a pattern or slope. Um, I'll ask you what is causality. I'll ask you what slope or, you know, any of those things are. Two, you ought to be able to pick a picture of correlation. That's the Maybe you have to get a picture. Three, you should be able to find the trend line and the correlation coefficient. You do that with the spreadsheet or the calculator. And four, you need to be able to find the slope and the point slope equation. And that is what this problem is. And we see that it's got a negative slope. So somebody tell me what kind of correlation we're going to have, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. It's going to be a negative because the slope, the sign of the slope and the sign of the correlation is rela relative. They are related to each other. There it is. Now they just found their line. You can do that with a trend line, on, uh, but they just picked two points. You might want to go ahead and write that down. The equation of the least squares regression line is given by y hat, like a hat, put a hat on, is equal to b1, b sub 1x plus b sub o. And write down those two. I'm not going to ask you this question, but you may see a homework question like this. I don't think I'm going to ask too many of those questions. I don't we, we don't go over those too much in my class. Yeah, see, I would just ask you to punch these in your calculator or the spreadsheet and give me the trend line. So yeah, I, I wouldn't ask you to do all that. So, and the calculator or the trend line will give you this. So that's that. Interpretation of the slope. Y-intercept. Okay. Write down, never use a least squared regression line to make predictions for what? Outside the trend line. Okay. So if your trend line goes to X is equal to 80 units, should you make a prediction of 90? No. If the trend line stops at 80 and begins at zero, then you can predict from zero to 80, but you should not go past 80 because your trend line only goes to 80. So you need to write, never use a least squared regression trend line. Never use the trend line to make predictions outside the scope. Now, if you were making a prediction out in the real world and you said, well, I made this trend line, I'm going to just use this as an estimate, you could do that. But don't do it when you're doing research because people will have a fit. Um, again, there's your, to give you data, do this. Find a trend line. I'm not going to go over that again. I think that's 4.3, Huey. Oh, it is? Okay, we don't have to do that then. Okay, so 4.1 and 4.2. That's all 4.1 and 4.2. Okay? Now, 
if you notice, now let me go ahead and say this because I've got some students, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to say this. I've got some students that I don't know what y'all are doing, but y'all make a mountain out of a molehill, okay? And I think y'all got, uh, I mean, you know, when you, when you go to the, when you go to, you go to your assignments, and I'm talking about both 120s. I mean, y'all just blew my mind this weekend. I mean, really, I just don't understand it. But when you go to, to 120, and you go to assignments or tests, if it ever comes up, I'm going to have to restart my computer again. Let's go to quizzes and tests. When you go to quizzes or tests, it should say when it's due. I thought that MALAV Plus puts when it's due. But I've had about five or six students. Uh, 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 I'm confused. I don't understand. Somebody tell me how you can be confused. Even with the homework. Look there. So, and you should not do this. You should not go, oh, there's no date. I'm confused. No. You should go to your outline, and your outline, let's go to the outline. Let's go through and do this. I thought I went through this the first week of class, but evidently, either I didn't do it or y'all didn't listen. Not not y'all, but 120 online and 120. And down at the bottom here, look at there. There's the outline. So you look here, you go, okay, in, in this unit, it says 4.1, 4.2. 5.1, 5.2, 5 5.5. .5. So at the end of 5.5, .5, we're probably going to have a test. Well, I'm taking out 5.3 and 5.6. That's what I was getting to. Because you see 5.3 and 5.6, it's on your outline. But look at here. It's not on your test. It's not on your homework. So you know that what that's going to cause, don't you? That's going to cause a permanent meltdown. If I don't put the homework on your homework list, then you don't need to what? Worry about it. You don't need to worry about it. So, chapter 5 is 5 5.1, 5.2, 5.4, and 5.5. 5. When we get to 5.4 and 5.5, what should y'all be thinking about? The test, test is coming test. up. And what does the Hubert do when the test comes up? What do I do? Review. You re review. I review, and then what do I do when I review the test? After I review the test, what do I usually do in regards to the homework and the test? Questions. Questions, and I also put what on both of them? Due dates. The due dates. I have come to the conclusion after teaching for 20 something years. Do you know who worries about the dates the most? Procrastinators. 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 And see, they can't handle me not giving them dates. That's it's just, they're, they're like, I don't know what to do because they don't have the dates. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not changing my teaching methods because you procrastinate, all right? So when we get to 5.4 and 5.5, 5.4, 5.5, then you probably are thinking about a test. And I will say, okay, 5.5, we're finishing that today, so that means I'll be going over the test Thursday. And if I go over the test Thursday, that means I'm going to assign the dates. I don't understand why this is difficult, but... Anyway, 5.1, 5.2, 5.4, 5.5. I've went over that twice now. 
I will have somebody email me and ask me, what about 5.3 and 5.6? And will I reply? No. No. And then they'll complain that I didn't reply to their email. Okay, 5.1. 5.1 is probability in general. Now, there's three things of probability. There's four things of probability. And I know that y'all have had this before, so I'm kind of going over it, kind of uh, hop and skip, and then let y'all send questions, and then we'll go over it as we need to. One, there's basic probability. Basic probability is the number of times something happens over the number of times something is tried. And we'll get into that in here in just a minute. Number two, you have the additive law. Number three, you have the multiplicative law. And number four, you have counting. Counting using the factorial function. Now that is chapter five right there. I don't know what I think is 5.1, 5.2, 5 5.4. I think this is 5.1. Now, Hubert, when you were doing yeah. the video, it had uh, another one for odds. I think. Okay, I'll include that, but the odds comes in in basic probability. I just don't, I don't make it separate. Okay. Um, what, which one? Look in your outline and tell me which one is odds. Mm. If it says, I don't know. If some books it break don't. it up, some books don't. That one doesn't say, I don't think. Well, I'm going to include it with the basic probability. Okay. Now there's four sections, and you got 4.1 and 4.2. Sorry, went over that. Okay. So you're talking about six sections into six into ten, or yeah, six into ten. Talking about two and a half, you know, six. No one. Talking about one or two questions out of each one. Okay. Yeah. There's four or five, six. Yeah. Close to two questions out of each one. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So you're talking about 25 questions on a test. So you're talking about four questions out of each one. Okay. Now, basic probability. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoints now. And you can find the PowerPoints in multimedia. Uh, you, I don't I don't make these PowerPoints. I just use them. The reason I use them is because I'd be going all over the place if I didn't have these PowerPoints. I'd be going here and there and here and there. And so I have to have the PowerPoints kind of keep me keep me grounded. So you can pull them up in your multimedia library. And you can look over them. There we go. Okay. I don't use that definition for probability. I use this definition. That's too complicated. Probability is assigning a number between zero and one to a prediction based on Logic, experience, 
or mathematics. Because nobody can tell the future. If you ever meet somebody and they tell you they can tell the future, all you got to do is ask them one question. What is that question? What are the lottery numbers? Winning numbers? What are the what are the winning lottery numbers for for tomorrow night? Oh, well, that's not what I do. No, you don't. You're a fraud. Okay. How many of you have ever played the game Twenty Questions before? I lived that game. You do. Okay. My three children. Well, tell me, tell me why, what, what is, what, why am I bringing up twenty questions and probability? Because if you play twenty questions enough, you can pretty much tell what another person's thinking by deduction, right? How many of you have ever been to a fortune teller? What the heck do they do? What the heck do they start doing before you even sit down? They okay. start asking you what? They start asking you questions. Okay, they're playing twenty questions with you. They already know that you're already insecure. Why do they know that you're already insecure? Because you're there. You're there. So they already know that you have some problems, whether it's confidence or whether it's you know, you're having trouble with your uh, significant other or your parents or you lost your dog or you lost your job. They already know something's up in your life. And all they have to do now is zero in. And then they'll say, you're going to meet somebody in the next week. Well, heck, we meet, we meet, we meet people every day. OK, what really gets me is these that go, I can use your dreams and I can take your dreams and I can tell you your future. Yeah, whatever. I'm good. Oh, Lord. Y'all ever meet any of these people? No, but they've been advertising psychics on TV a lot lately in California. Yeah. Don't, don't fall for it. All you got to do is ask them one question. Uh, yeah, uh, Chloe, uh, all I got is one question. I need the five, six numbers for the uh for the uh lottery mega million so i need i need six numbers if you would give me those numbers oh well i don't do that yeah if they come out with i don't do that that basically means i'm a fraud give me money so now what do i mean by this or man well i use this in the videos and if you watch the videos for the two people that watched it I use the highway that goes to Pendleton from my area called Wild Hog Road. Now, Wild Hog Road comes out. Here's the Waffle House in Pendleton. And there's Clemson Boulevard and the Millican. And there's a big, big apartment complex right in here. And Millican, there's a Millican building back here. Pendleton High School is right here. So some of y'all know where I'm what I'm talking about. Okay. The QT in Pendleton is right here. Okay. And when you travel this road, for any of you that travels it, you know that when you get on it, you're doomed. Why? Because it's straight and it's got double yellow lines all the way down it. And you're always going to get in front of the little blue haired ladies club and it's about a 16 mile stretch so if you got on that road at 15 till 8 and it takes 15 minutes to travel you ain't gonna get to Pendleton at 15 minutes it's gonna be more like 30 minutes because you're gonna get behind the little blue haired ladies club and when you get to this little blue haired ladies club you're gonna get up to Pendleton high school and you're gonna get to the red light and the red light is right here, and it's got a turning lane where you can turn left or you can turn right. And you say to yourself, I bet she's going to turn left. 
and bam, just as soon as you say that to yourself, what does she do? She turns on her left blinker. You have just foretold the future. No, you haven't. You use logic. What do you mean logic, Hubert? Well, how many of you know where where uh, Townville is? I do. Okay, Tville is right there. Oops, sorry. Tville is north of of uh, Wild Hog Road. West Anderson is south of Wild Hog Road. We won't even talk about Double Springs. He might know Townville. We won't talk about Double Springs. But Townville is this way. So if I get on Wild Hog Road, experience tells me that the people that are on Wild Hog Road are either from Townville or from what? West Anderson, and they're heading toward what? Pendleton or Sandy Springs. Experience tells me that because there's no other way, okay, except for 85. And if you're from Townville, you could take 85 and go down 85 a quarter of a block and get off on Wild Hog Road. You could do that if you wanted to. But most of the people that are on Wild Hog Road that are going that direction by experience are from West Anderson or Townville. Okay. Well, how do I know she's not going to Sandy Springs? Anybody know Wild Hog Road that tells me why she's not going to Sandy Springs? Because there's about three turnoffs on Wild Hog Road that goes to Sandy Springs. So logic dictates if she didn't take one of those three roads, then where the hell is she going? She's Penalty. going to Pendleton. So I just used experience and logic to tell me that that woman was going to turn left when she got to the red light. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use her dreams to tell me her future. I just used experience and logic. Now, what is You've got two or three types of, let's see if I got these slides in here. I don't know. Okay. My, my computer is just not. Write that down, the rule of large numbers. Write that down. In probability and statistics, repetition is what? Repetition is good. What does the word CYA mean? Cover your backside. When you're dealing with research, what is good? Large numbers. Why is large numbers good? More accurate. More accurate, yes. So write that down for large number rule. More accurate. Okay, write that down. We're going to get to that later. Write this down. An experiment is a process that can be repeated in which the results are on what? Certain. Sample space of a probability experience is the collection of all possible outcomes. I'm going to give you an example. If a couple has two children, What's the sample space of those two children? Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. Everybody with me? So there's four in the sample space. Boy, boy, 
boy, girl, girl, boy, or girl, girl. So that sample space is four. Now you need to make sure you make a note of sample space, use boy, girl, and do at least three children. Now you can look them up by going to Google and finding the chart and just using the chart or you can do them, you know, boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. You can do it like that. An event is a collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. An event may consist of one outcome or more than one outcome. We will denote events with outcome. My mother calls me every day and I tell her I teach from 12 to 5 and she calls me every day. Called simple events. In general, events are denoted using capital letters such as capital E. So probability of an event would be probability capital E. I'm sorry, my daughter's doing something for me and she needs to log in and password. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. All right. Consider the probability spent of having two children. Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. The sample space, well, that's the identify the outcomes. Here are the outcomes. Here is sample space. The same thing. This is event one. This is event two. This is event three. This is event four. Take off the events and now you got sample space. This is what everybody B is what everybody goes by. Okay. Have one boy. You only got two that has one boy. Now that is a test question. Okay. What is the sample space of two children? Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. Make sure you can do three children. Now, I just tell students to go to Google and pull it up because it's a whole lot easier to do that unless you just like to, you know, figure it out yourself. And I'm just going to go sample space for three children. It's real easy because either it's a boy or a girl. Sample space four, three, children, children, and hit, I don't know what's wrong with this computer, never been this slow, uh, well, sample space if, the, the keyboard's not working, everything's slow, it's a, it's a, you know what it is, don't you, it's a conspiracy, Sample space for three children, there it is. Or you can just hit images. I would highly suggest that you write this one out. There it is, boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, girl. Don't do the arrows, that's just confusing. Here's another one right here. Boy, 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 girl. You need to write that down. Okay, I'll pull this one up for you for the two people that's going to write it down. Boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, girl. So write that down. So the you'll have two on there. You'll have the two two kids, boy, girl. I meant boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. And then three kids. Yeah. 
Okay, make sure you have those two. Probability is between zero and one, meaning a decimal. I think I've already told you that. Probability model, we don't go over those. Okay, this is what we call a qualitative probability distribution. Why? Because you don't have measurements right here. You have categories, red, blue, orange, green, brown, yellow. This is a categorical probability distribution. I don't know why they're showing you that because we get into that later. All right, write this down. If an event is impossible, the probability of the event is zero. But does that mean it's impossible? Nothing is impossible. Think of dang old birth control. Okay? If an event is is certainty then it's one an unusual event is an event that has a low probability of occurring like 0 0.03 now there is a question on your test or standardized test and it says the probability of event blah 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 is zero does that mean that it's impossible and you say, no. Y'all ever seen uh, Jurassic Park? Yes, sir. Jurassic Park, the black, the, go the gold balloon guy, he's in the black uh, leather jacket. He said, one thing we always know is that life always finds a way. And what does the dinosaur guy what does he find out in the dinosaur world? He finds what? Eggs. Nothing is impossible, all right? Now, this, this is not a motivational speech, but if you think of zero as impossible, yeah, it's okay to say there's a very strong probability it's not going to happen, but I do not use the word impossible because it's too... It, 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 in, 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 in probability, you don't want words to hold you down. Impossible holds you down. And you don't want to say impossible because, like I said, dang old birth control is 99.7% effective, but that's not impossible. So you remember that. There is probability, whether you're doing regular probability or classic probability, it's always the number of events that actually happen over the number of trials. And I gave you that a while ago. So the probability of a king in a deck of cards would be four over 52. The probability of a two on a die would be one out of six. The probability of flipping the tails on a coin would be one out of two. The probability of an event over the number of times it could happen. So you need to write that down, or you don't have to write down if you know it. But no, well, we're not going to go through that. Classical method of computing probabilities requires equally likely outcomes. An experiment is said to have equally likely outcomes when each simple event has the same probability of occurring. Now you might want to write that down just for standardized tests. Classical method of computing probabilities requires equally likely outcomes.
again, there's the how many times something can occur over the number of outcomes. I don't know why they give it to you. I mean, it's the same formula, but they say for classical method, it's this. So I'm not going to worry about that. It's the same formula. All right, here's, here's a good example. Suppose a fun-sized bag of M&Ms contain nine brown candies, six yellow candies, seven red candies, four orange candies, two blue candies, and two green candies. Suppose that a candy is randomly selected. What is the probability of yellow? Well, first you gotta add up all these numbers. Nine plus six is 15. 15 plus four is 19. 19 plus seven is 26, 28, and 30. So there's 30 pieces of candy in this bag. So what would be yellow? Six out of 30, Hubert. That's right, class. What would be blue? Two, two, out, of two out of 30. And commit, comment on the likelihood of the candies being yellow versus blue. Well, yellow, you would have a higher probability because you got six out of 30 versus two out of 30. Oh, excuse me. Use the probability applet to stimulate, simulate. Throw in a six. Okay, we don't have that, so. Okay, there's 5.2. So that's 5.1. All right. We're going to call it a day there. I don't know what time it is. What time is class over? 2.35. All right, we're going to call it a day. So I've, I've gone over three sections today, and that gives y'all time to work on homework. So I want y'all to work on 5.1, 4.1, and 4.2 homework and start sending homework questions in, okay? Let me hit the record button and stop presenting. And now I can pull up the attendance. Y'all shouldn't be able to see my screen now. Uh, attendance tracker, please work. I'm going to read this computer first time. 12012. Today is Tuesday. Okay. Oh, I didn't do Tuesday and Thursday. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't have class last week. No. Sir. No. Yeah, because of everything. I'm sorry about that. Not my. It's not my. Not my call. And Thursday. I'm giving y'all all yeses for Thursday and Tuesday. Okay. Now for today. I'm going to go down the list and you speak up. So make sure all your microphones are off. Um, Billy's here. Chinvert. No Chinvert. Flores Espinosa. Here. Paul. Yes, sir. Here. Herring. Here. Howard. Here. King. Here. Osorio. Here. Smith. That's Smith. Browse. Here. Sweat. That's Sweat. White. Miss White was here. She had to leave. Woodward, you're here. Yates. Sir. Yates. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Smith said something. Is Miss Smith here? Oh, she's here. Thank you, Miss Smith. Uh, Yates and Young. No Young. All right, everybody else can either go or if you got questions, stay after class. I'll see y'all Thursday.
Bye-bye.